There's a happy little verse in Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, and verse 38, and it says this, Give. That's how it starts. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, this is a divine principle. We have to be patient. Sometimes the giving and the receiving are years or decades apart, um, maybe even generational. But what a wonderful principle this is, that God is no man's debtor, and when he gives back, he doesn't give grudgingly. He gives good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, let me uh, tell you a little story that illustrates this amazing truth. My father came from Scotland as an unknown young man in the Royal Air Force. First time away from home, he landed in Moncton, New Brunswick, and uh, had to spend some time there. And a lot of the things that were going on at the base in the off time were ungodly, and he didn't want to be there. And sometimes he'd just head downtown and walk around the streets of Moncton. But there was a Christian couple there, the McNeils, and they showed him kindness. At that point, Boyd Nicholson was an unknown name in Canada. They took him in, they showed him kindness, and many a time, Mrs. McNeil would say to her teenage kids, I want you to go and drive around downtown, see if you can find Mr. Nicholson, and they'd find Boyd uh, hot-footing it down the road somewhere, pick him up, bring him back to the house for supper, and they just lavished God's kindness, the the kindness, the grace of the Lord on my dear dad. And it meant so much to him in his early Christian life. He'd just been saved at the age of 17, and uh, here he was. He wasn't quite 20 years old, I don't think, maybe 19. It was only a year or two he'd been saved, and how they uh, loved him for the Lord's sake. Uh, they didn't know his family back in Scotland, didn't know anything about him, but they showed him kindness. All right, the years roll by. My father gets out of the um, military after the end of the war, comes to Canada with his parents, marries my mother in St. Catharines. They settle down and um, have three children. And eventually my father is called out of business and the Lord sends him out into the work. And uh, one of the first series of gospel meetings he had was with Robert McClurkin and they went to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Now that's for those of you not familiar, that's the next province to New Brunswick. And they had a series of gospel meetings there. And what do you know? The first two people who got saved were the grandchildren of Mr. and Mrs. McNeil. <laughs> the Lord says, give, and it will be given to you. As surely as you sow seed and it comes into fruition, as surely as you minister to others, the ministry comes back to you. It's a principle that God has built into the moral universe. And we impoverish ourselves by not giving. We're not enriched by what we keep. Some of the poorest people in the world are misers. We are enriched by giving away. And when we invest in others, some college student, some widow, some, some old person that we show kindness to. We have no idea, but God writes down a little note in his book. And sometimes a year or 10 years, or maybe to our children or children's children, the blessing of God comes back just as surely. I'll tell you a little story on myself. I have been sent over to uh, speak at a missionary conference in Europe in the country of France, not far from Evian. And I was a little discouraged, a bit of a hard go getting over there, and, and I was looking for a little encouragement from the Lord. Well, the first night, a family came in and sat down. They were not missionaries with the conference. What had happened, they had made an arrangement, they were from England, had made an arrangement to purchase a house there, and they were going to move to Evian, and uh, when they got there, after having packed everything up and moved, 
Here, the uh, contractor had sold the house to somebody else who paid a higher price. And so here they were stuck in the trailer park with all their worldly goods. And uh, they saw some missionaries there who were reading their Bible or something, got talking to them, and they invited them up to the conference. They were out at every meeting, sat in the front. They were just drinking in the word. You could tell they were so hungry for fellowship. And so I befriended them and um, little by little they opened up to me and they told me this story. And so the whole group of missionaries began to pray that they'd find a house. And sure enough, it wasn't long until they were talking to a pilot's wife from Brittany. She said, why don't you buy our house? And they said, well, we couldn't afford your house. She said, well, what were you going to pay for the other house? And when they told her, she said, we'll accept that price for our house. And they ended up buying this beautiful chalet overlooking the water, a boat in the harbor, uh, bicycles, gardens, furniture in the house, sheets, everything. Everything was there. And the Lord just dropped this beautiful home into their lap. Well, after the conference, I went and stayed with them a few days, did some painting with them, some cleanup around the place. And we had some wonderful fellowship. Well, I headed back to England and uh, met again with a relative of my brother's who had kindly picked me up at the airport and given me hospitality when I was in England. And uh, while I was there, a couple were visiting them from the north of England, and we had some lovely fellowship together. They actually came and on the ride to the airport to pick me up. And then the last evening, I went over to another couple's home, an older couple, and they very graciously gave me a large gift of money, which was what I used to get from England to the conference and back, because I really didn't have the money to get there. And I was able to buy a ferry ride from uh, New Haven to Dieppe and then take the TGV most of the way and then the milk run up to Evian. And it was the money that they gave me that made that possible. Well, when I get back to England, what do I discover? But that this couple in France had been involved in a very strict cult. And the cult had become more and more oppressive, telling him where he could work and who his kids could marry and everything else. And finally, they decided, we're getting out of here. They packed everything up in the middle of the night and escaped to France without telling anybody where they were. It turns out that the uh, husband was the brother of the lady who she and her husband came and picked me up at the airport. They were visiting from the north of England. And then the woman was the daughter of the older couple that I had visited who gave me the funds to get to the conference. And they had no idea where their children were, where this couple had gone to. And I was able to inform them how God had provided a home for them and how they were settling in and so on. And it was just another evidence how that would ever happen, that this couple who were visiting from the north of England would be there on the very day that I would arrive, and how this couple who showed me such kindness, who are longing to know how their daughter and grandchildren were doing, would be the very couple that I would be able to communicate with because of the kindness shown. There are millions of stories like that. Many of them we don't know showing kindness to someone on the side of the road, giving someone a little money to get some groceries or to buy a lunch. We have no idea, but God keeps track. And heaven will be the unfolding of this amazing story of one kindness shown here and another there, and then how it boomeranged. Perhaps generations later, God returned in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, because God loves to bless people. He loves to give. And what restricts his generosity is our own generosity. If we would give, he would fill up what was remaining. We need to give to enlarge our own capacity to receive the blessing of God. So be encouraged today. Look for opportunities to give 
and leave it to God to reimburse you in ways that are beyond your imagination. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over.